Leia here from LeiaPersai.com, and in this video, I'll take you through the reaction and mechanism for aromatic sulfonation. You can catch my entire series on electrophilic aromatic substitution by visiting my website, LeiaPersai.com slash EAS. Let's start with the reaction overview. Aromatic sulfonation is when benzene or substituted benzene reacts with SO3 in the presence of H2SO4 to yield a sulfonated benzene. Some of you will learn that SO3 reacts in the presence of H2SO4, but you may also see this reaction as taking place in fuming sulfuric acid, which is simply H2SO4 and heat. The fuming sulfuric acid will undergo a reaction to create the super electrophile that we discussed in the introductory video. That's how you get the SO3 to react, and that's how you get benzene to attack. Another unique thing about aromatic sulfonation is that unlike the other EAS reactions, this is actually reversible in an aqueous acidic solution. <coughs> we talked about the super electrophile, now let's see how we actually make it. When dealing with fuming sulfuric acid, you have the heat to catalyze the intermediates of the reaction as follows. One of the sulfuric acid molecules will use a lone pair on its oxygen to reach out and grab an acidic hydrogen from the next sulfuric acid molecule. When it does so, the bond between hydrogen and oxygen collapses onto that other oxygen. I'm showing each molecule with a unique color so you can follow where every atom comes from. The resulting molecules look as follows. For the purple starting molecule, we still have the complete H2SO4, but we have an additional hydrogen attached to that oxygen with only one lone pair and a positive formal charge. The green sulfuric acid, having lost a hydrogen, now has three lone pairs on oxygen and a negative charge. This is the conjugate sulfate ion that will disappear into solution, so we're not going to look at it anymore. Going back to our purple molecule, we have an OH2+, which is not very stable, but the reason we added that hydrogen is to make water into a good leaving group, and as good leaving groups do, this water molecule will break away from the sulfur and disappear into solution. This leaves me with a sulfur atom double bound to two oxygens and single bound to one oxygen with a hydrogen. We also have that water molecule floating around the solution, now with two lone pairs and no charge on the oxygen. But the sulfur is not as lucky. Even though it does have a complete octet, remember that sulfur is an exception to the octet rule. It can have up to 12 electrons or 6 bonds. And using the formal charge trick of should minus has, we see that sulfur has 5 electrons directly attached to itself, but it should have 6. 6 minus 5 is positive 1, and this sulfur has a formal charge of plus 1. The positive sulfur is drawing on the electrons from oxygen to help compensate for that charge, leaving the attached hydrogen very partially positive. A water molecule will take advantage and grab the positive hydrogen, giving oxygen back the electrons, and essentially allowing oxygen to form that pi bond with sulfur, giving me the final super electrophile, which is sulfur double bound to three oxygen atoms. We also have hydronium floating around this solution. Let's analyze the super electrophile a little more closely. We have a neutral sulfur double bound to three different oxygen atoms. Even though sulfur is neutral, it's capable of resonating a pi bond onto each of the three oxygens, which would result in a positive sulfur and negative oxygen. And so the actual sulfur trioxide is going to be partially positive on sulfur and partially negative on each of the oxygen atoms due to the potential resonance. And this is what makes this molecule such a strong super electrophile that benzene has no choice but to attack. So let's take a look at the mechanism. The mechanism begins when benzene uses a pi bond to break the aromaticity, reach out and attack the partially positive sulfur atom. This causes one of the pi bonds between sulfur and oxygen to collapse onto oxygen. The resulting sigma complex is no longer aromatic and has a sulfur bound to carbon, double bound to two oxygen atoms, and single bound to one negative oxygen atom. We also have a hydrogen attached where the sulfur is attached, making this carbon sp3 hybridized. And finally, we also have a positive charge at the neighboring carbon atom where the pi bond broke away. In order to reform the aromaticity and reform the stability in benzene, we bring in a weak base from solutions such as the sulfate conjugate base. 
This will reach out for and grab the hydrogen off the sp3 carbon. The hydrogen nucleus is grabbed without its electrons, leaving those electrons to collapse towards that positive carbon, reforming the aromaticity. But we're not done yet. Benzene is once again aromatic, but the SO3 still has a negative charge, and so the negative oxygen will reach out and grab the hydrogen from sulfuric acid, regenerating the sulfate and giving us a neutral product. The final product of this reaction is a neutral sulfonated benzene, a negative sulfate ion, and a positive hydronium ion. While these are spectators, I'm writing them here to show you that the net charge of the reaction has to be zero. Be sure to join me in the next few videos where I take you through Friedel-Crafts alkylation, Friedel-Crafts acylation, and then show you a comparison between the two reactions. You can catch my entire series on electrophilic aromatic substitution by visiting my website, layofersci.com EAS. Are you struggling with organic chemistry? Are you looking for resources and information to guide you through the course and help you succeed? If so, then I have a deal for you. A free copy of my ebook, 10 Secrets to Acing Organic Chemistry. Use the link below or visit orgosecrets.com to grab your free copy. After downloading your free copy of my ebook, you'll begin receiving my exclusive email updates with cheat sheets, reaction guides, study tips, and so much more. You'll also be the first to know when I have a new video or live review coming up. If you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up and share it with your organic chemistry friends and classmates. I will be uploading many videos over the course of the semester, so if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, do so right now to be sure that you don't miss out.